Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. If you are not subscribed, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please consider subscribing. Um, so <laughs> coronavirus is totally, totally crazy. Um, today I got a little bit scared that in the future I'm not going to be able to leave my house. <laughs> um, my, the, the schools are closed till like the, the end of, um, the end of the year or the end of the semester. Um, it's, it's just crazy. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't know where it'll be at in another week and a half, but hopefully you guys will be there with me. Um, but anyway, so yesterday I, I, I was watching a video on, um, Polar Warriors, uh, which is a channel that I like to check out, uh, every now and then. And, um, he had a video that he put out the seven facts about bipolar, uh, the other day. And, um, you know, about half of the video I found very informative. Um, I, I mean, it's totally informative, the whole thing, but it's important to remember that there's so much different information and there's so much, so little that people know about this disease, even in the medical community. So all you can really rely on are people's individual's experiences, especially when it's someone like me talking to you um, about my personal experience. It's gonna be totally different from almost, I mean, everybody probably. I mean, there were, I, I feel like we all have similarities, um, but it's different for everyone. And one of the things I, I, I was kind of a little bit triggered um, because a couple of the things that he said really, um, really got to me. Cause so like there, there were seven facts about, about bipolar, right? So the first one is like, you know, you have mixed episodes. Um, yes, useful information. Um, people do have mixed episodes. Um, it never goes away. That was number two. Uh, yeah, definitely never goes away. Um, he mentioned that it was a spectrum illness, which I never really thought of it that way before. I knew everyone had different levels and different um, types and ways that they respond, but I'd never heard it referred to in that manner before. And um, he said it was progressive. Yes, if left untreated, your episodes get closer and closer together. For example, mine, I had the first one at 17, second one at 28, the next one at... 35 and then the next one at 38. So they got closer and closer together um, over the years because I, I never got treatment. But the things that, that triggered me was when he was talking about um, three, four, and five. And what he was saying was that, so his fact number three was that um, you can't reason with someone who is in an episode, and that is true. You can't episode. You can't reason with someone in an episode. Um, but he didn't really go into the level of that, so it's difficult to really understand. Um, but he did say it's important to respond rather than to not react. But also that is difficult to understand too. Um, and then he said don't, number four, he's like, in number four, he's talking about don't shelter the person that he needed. He's saying that he needed to, to hit rock bottom to, um, to really have a fear of it happening again. Um, and the reason that he, that, that I was triggered by it was because I felt like he was taking responsibility for, like, I felt like he was blaming himself for not getting treatment sooner. And it, it triggered me because I feel like, like, should I be blaming myself for, for not getting treatment sooner? And like, you know, I was a minor, I was a teenager when this thing first came about and then it disappeared for 10 years. And how was I, I didn't have, no one in my family was like, look, you need to go to the doctor. You need to see someone and, and get on medication. That didn't happen. Granted, I was, I was 28 years old at the time, but I never had that support. I never had help. And it, I don't know that, you know, 
I don't know what he was referring to by that. I don't know if he was someone who was bipolar type two, and it, but I thought he had bipolar type one. I don't know, but it, it sounded to me that he was like taking responsibility for it. And he used the term rock bottom, which really bothered me because when you say, when you say, oh, I had to hit rock bottom, it's like you're, you're taking responsibility, like for the fact that like, oh, I had to really, really screw everything up super bad before I realized I needed to change. But the thing is, is that we don't get the help that we need. I should have had help when I was a teenager. I was misdiagnosed put on medication that nearly killed me. And then once all of that, I was taken off of that medication because it was killing me, I was never put on anything else. I was never, I, I got another false diagnosis that I was perfectly fine. And so then I have this other episode. How was I to know, you know, like there's no one out there telling me, you know, so like I felt like, we take responsibility and we blame ourselves for so much already as it is when you don't have a support system around you and you don't have someone helping you through. Because he also talked about in number five, number four, how um, that people shouldn't be sheltered, um, that he meets a lot of parents who want to shelter their bipolar loved one. And that um, if he had people helping him all the time, he wouldn't have the coping skills that he has. And I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily, I, I just disagree. I just completely disagree with that. Um, but you know, I mean, it's still an amazing channel. I'm not saying, trying to say anything bad about the channel. I'm just telling you guys how I felt about this video because it really affected me. Um, and then he he was also blaming himself, and I'm sorry, this is a long video, but he was also blaming himself because he was like, you know, another fact is, you know, and he was talking about how um, he didn't really see his mania as a problem because he would feel really good when he was manic. But the thing is, is that that's a symptom. So... You can't blame yourself for a symptom of an illness. Um, so that kind of like bothered me also. And I only, I only learned all this in group therapy. Group therapy really helped me. Um, so I'm really glad that I was kind of forced to go. I wouldn't have been forced to go if I hadn't been arrested and if I hadn't, um, you know, kind of spent three months in jail and had to find a program so that I didn't end up in prison. Um, so, you know, you can't, you, like the system kind of, uh, the system helped me um, in that way, but um, I don't think it helps a lot of people. I think the only reason why it helped me in that way is because I had my husband there to bail me out. Because if I had had to spend months and months and months in jail, it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been good. Um, but anyway, uh, I know this has been a long video, but I just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. It's really difficult for me to not be angry with the people that I counted on as a child to take care of me and help me navigate the universe. Um when I had such a serious illness, but who do I blame? You know, do I blame my parents? Do I blame the medical community? Do I blame the fact that I have this illness? Do I blame myself? Like you can't really blame anyone, but I think the most important thing is to not blame yourself. Um, so that's my opinion and that's how I live my life. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long video. Definitely check out that video. If you get a chance, I'll put a link um, down in the bottom. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts if you have any. Um, thank you for watching and have a wonderful night. Stay safe, quarantine, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.